Hi, everyone. Welcome to Atrium Research's YouTube channel. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Jed Richardson, the executive chairman and CEO of Trigon Metals, as well as Rennie Morkel, the president and CEO of the company. Um, just quickly, before we dive into things, I want to let the viewers know that Trigon is a company within our coverage universe. It has huge upside as it begins its <clears throat> first year of copper production and ramps that production uh, significantly over the next few years. We currently have a buy rating and a 60 cent per share target price on the company. Um, with that, Jed and Rennie, good to have you here. Thanks. Thank you very much, um, Ben. And then, so just to kick it off, Jed, maybe for the viewers that don't know Trigon too well, um, maybe you can give us a quick company overview, three to five minutes and walk us through that. Sure, I think I can do better than that. Uh, we're at uh, TSXV listed, uh, ticker TM, or all, you can also find us on um, uh, over the over the counter OTC and um, and on the Frankfurt Exchange. But uh, the story of Trigon really is production and growth. Uh, we where our main focus is the combat mine in Namibia which is the restart of uh, an old gold fields asset. Um, in its history, 12 and a half million tons at 2.6% copper was taken out over 45 years from that mine. Uh, we are sitting with a resource of over 12 million tons with at 2% copper between open pit and underground. So a long lived asset uh, for us to start with. And really a pillar for us to build what I'd like to think it will be a, at least a mid-tier uh, copper producer from. Uh, we started mining in May of last year. We commissioned our mill and got that started in August last year. Um, we shipped our first concentrate in, uh, in um, September and declared commercial production in October. So step by step, we've been knocking down our milestones, uh, all of that for the open pit. Uh, in September of last year, we also started pumping out our underground. The underground is really uh, the future of our asset. Uh, the, just to put it in context, our open pit grades 1 to 1.2% copper. From the underground, we're 2.6 to over 3% copper. Uh, so we can produce really profitably from underground. And, uh, and that's our next phase. We started mining from the underground in January. So step by step building, building the story as, as a mining producer, uh, step by step growing the production. And actually a big part of that is uh, maturing as a company. Um, and uh, we've uh, announced our new president and chief operating officer it's hard to call him new anymore, uh, but he's been, been around uh, been, been around uh, since October, and um, I'm here in Toronto working on uh, more of the mine finance side, and you know was help, but was really uh, had a strong role in the strategy. Now we've got a real operator in Randy Markle, who is uh, on site uh, five days a week. And, um, and and has the background to, to really move the company forward. So Renny, if you can introduce yourself here. Thank you very much. Um, so born and raised in South Africa and moved to Namibia in roughly 2013, permanent residence. Uh, spent my, my life um, in predominantly the base metals industry um, with a little bit of pressures, but did my long the long yards with African rainbow minerals, Noddles, Glencore, um, Swakop uranium, um, as well as Endeavor at ET Mine. Um, and looking forward to be part of the team. Um, Trigon at the moment is extremely exciting and a lot of lot of opportunity coming our our way the next the next year. So thank you for the introduction, Jay. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, it is gonna be quite an exciting few years for you guys. So Good to have you, Rennie. Um, with that, maybe Rennie, you can touch on how things are going operationally on site, maybe starting from surface and in the open pit and then diving into what's going on at the underground. Oh, thank you, Ben. 
So on surface mining, we've started to access our long life pit, uh, so all cap, um, in was roughly about in middle of Jan. Um, so we've got a continuous flow, continuous flow of material coming from ore capping. If you look historically, we've had specific pockets of ore that we did that we did focus on and mined out. Uh, but now we've been able to get enough information and define enough on the ore cap to, to consistently mine that for at least the next two to three years. Um, as Jed has alluded to, on the 1st of February, we took the first underground blast that came out in it was that was published. Um, and that is purely the operational training that was required to get the new workforce for underground up to speed, go through the training process, and in, will enable us to ramp up to a continuous production flow uh, throughout the year. Um, and get a workforce fully trained on underground equipment. We're in a fortunate position that when the mine closed, a lot of the labor stayed very close to the mine or was mobilized within the communities around the mines. With Trigon starting up, we've been very fortunate to just mobilize a lot of the old resources and hands that were there to assist with mining. So we've opened and identified two areas, fairly shallow areas. It's not extremely deep from underground. Um, as our underground dewatering has progressed to 251 meters. Um, so they, we are far away from any water at the moment. Um, and those two levels will provide sufficient ore for the foreseeable months. But as the, mon the mine progresses, we will continue down to the 11 level until we do the full underground commissioning, where we will mobilize and um, upgrade the underground dewatering facilities and that will ultimately allow us to go down to 22 level and on the processing side uh, it's going well um, normal commissioning and recommissioning of a mine it has its challenges it has its swings and roundabouts um, but it's a learning curve for everybody and the team is extremely dedicated on the site if i can comment additionally to it farney and jet have done exceptionally well combining a team and putting them together and mobilizing them to site um, and there's an hod and a management team that is extremely committed and dedicated to the success of the mine and once you have the right structures in place that's 80 percent of the battle um, so now truly looking forward to it yeah no it's it's a very exciting story um you know, and there's there's a ton going on. So I imagine you're pretty busy right now, um, touching base with Jed all the time. But just on that, in terms of catalysts coming from the the operation, um, from the open pit, but then more importantly, the underground, what's sort of coming in the pipeline that investors can get excited about? I think a key thing is even in the next, next few days, uh, we'll be reporting our first quarter so that's uh, our Q3, but um, uh, October through December of uh, 2023. And, um, you know, in that, you, you, we're going through all of the teething of, uh, of starting, starting an operation, but uh, we, I, I think in, investors will be pleased to see uh, that, uh, that even from the open pit in our very first few months, uh, we uh, we're, we're we're doing we're doing I'd say pretty good as a, as an operation with all all the hiccups that you would expect. Um, so that's a that's that's a key catalyst over the next next few days. And then um, we've been working in the background on our uh, on a on a full feasibility report that would encompass you know third party evaluation of our uh, of both our open pit and underground and um, in, in these first phases uh, so we should we should be looking at that report also in the next next week or so so um, that, that's going to be really meaningful uh, just you know as, as much as uh, we've got your uh, <laughs> opinions <laughs> Ben uh, we'll have um, the benefit of of work done by SRK, looking at uh, lo lo looking at the operation, looking at um, the mine schedule uh, as we as we really get the underground underground going. Um, 
as far as getting to commercial like production levels from the from the underground you can speak to this a bit Renny. uh we're looking at, uh, at being there in april uh but uh we've all we we do we've already um benefiting a little from from the underground tons that have come out and started to feed feed some of that into the mill uh and uh using that to to amplify the grade as we've been um uh, as we've we've started right kind of ahead of schedule on um on underground production uh and then as as those of you who followed the story along uh we are regularly putting out drill results and we'll resume that schedule uh over over the next month or so as we get these major milestones out of the way and um and go back to uh go back to to uh or, or have have space to to announce some of the work that's that's uh that that we've done with the with the drill or with the with the with the drills sorry mm -hmm. yeah well no and and even on the drilling you know throughout all of last year you guys were reporting consistent very high grade results well above the average grade of the deposit things like 6% copper over 15 meters, 5% over 15, things like that, that are quite staggering and, and for sure will boost the economics as you guys go forward here and work that into the mine plan. But it is a nice little sweetener um, besides the quarterly production results, which will be material as you go through 2024 here. Um, <clears throat> and then with that, Jed, um, there's you know a, a press release you guys put out early last week on the spin-off of the Moroccan assets, which is quite exciting. Do you mind just touching on that for the for the viewers? Absolutely. So uh, this is a, again key catalyst over the next few next month or so. Uh, we, um, we 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 hinted at this back in uh, June when we were granted the permits for the Adana for Adana. Uh, we're seeing our projects in Morocco as getting to a, a critical mass where they can really support themselves, uh, both in interest for the market and, uh, and for the work that needs to be done. Uh, the the um, a Silver Hill project, we, we have a, we're actually permitted full through to mining. So we'd like to get in there and do things like bulk samples, uh, do some additional work just so we can really get a better idea of what's there um uh, we've already we, we've already had great results like uh, we, i know that there's a hole we put in that was eight meters at uh uh 1.8 percent copper with 121 grams per ton silver a fantastic hole within 50 meters of the surface and then our trench in there two kilometers away uh, was um 13 meters at 2.7 percent copper uh, 34 and a half grand silver and then there was a little bit of cobalt that came with it uh we'd like to get in there and put a real program in but we don't want to dilute our our shareholders who are looking at uh, combat for uh, for cash flow right and um uh so we're we, we made the decision that and we'll, and we'll put put it to the shareholders now that it would be best to separate this out shareholders will get a chance to vote on um, on April 9th and, uh, and with that they will receive uh, receive what we'll call Safi silver the uh, Moroccan assets as a dividend and um, uh, so you'll have your uh, combat uh, in Trigon as a uh, as, as your core investment and then you'll receive a um, uh, sh shares in Safi silver as a as a as a spin out. So I, I think it'll be a great way for you as a share as the shareholders to to recognize some value for what we're building. You know we're seeing some excitement uh, with our neighbors, um, uh, Aya Gold and Silver, and um, I think Morocco. We, the thesis we had in Morocco has proven proven to be correct. You know that this is a juris a high quality jurisdiction that uh, that the market is going to focus in on. Um, and we'll, we'll, we're, we're, we're doing this to set up our shareholders to really take advantage of it. Um, and then we'll, the, the Adana project, I think will surprise 
surprise everyone. Uh, huge area, 40 kilometers of, of strike length, uh, covered in mineralized veins at, uh, with really, really high grade material. You know, uh, I think uh, we, we publicized a grab sample of over half a kilogram of silver with 25% lead and, and uh, I think 5% zinc. And uh, there's lots more to come in uh, with that property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and it, it absolutely makes sense. There's so many producers out there that get no credit for their secondary exploration assets. And so this way, the, the people interested in explorers and that want that massive upside um, can, can hang on to those shares. And the people in combat or Trigon, excuse me, focused on combat can see the, the growth that Rennie is going to put together over the next few years here. Um, so with that, was was there anything else you two wanted to touch on um, for the viewers? Actually, yeah, we should probably should mention uh, that we're not that, that we're we're not now cutting uh, Trigon and combat out of that exploration explosive upside, right? Um, you know, we it's kind of well documented the 35 kilometers of strike length that we're that we're uh, going to be exploring there. Um, like you said, we've had a lot of a lot of success with the drill already, but uh, we we're, we're going to be doing that both from underground and along that strike length. And then Rennie, I, I don't know if you could add a little bit about the Kalhari project that we that we announced. Oh, thank you very much, Jason. Just adding to like Jed alluded to, so we recently um, in the process of closing the Kalari project. That's 760,000 hectares um, of prime property on the Kalari copper belt. Um, so on the Botswana side, Sandfire, that's got a $2 billion market cap. You've got Makoa that's just sold for $2 billion as well. Um, and it's very unexplored on the Namibian side. Um, we're the second largest landowner on that on the belt uh, next to Rio, um, and we're bordered by Northern X on the sides as well as Rio. So they're very excited about the prospectivity on it. It's it's a different type of ore body, um, and it's a much larger scale typically than what we've got in the Combat Valley. Um, so we already started with preempting some of the work. Um, we've got close international relationships that assisting with potential with uh, ge geophysics on it um, and hoping to mobilize the in most probably Q3, Q4 of 2025. So really looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, importantly, this is something that we can work on at the pace that combat's developing, right? Yes. So as the, the plan all along had been to grow combat, grow its cash flow, and then use that cash flow to to develop other projects. I think you know Morocco kind of sped ahead faster than we faster than we initially planned, and we're now we're we're still going to find a way to to create value for our shareholders. But we're still keeping that big exploration upside with the uh, with the Kalahari project. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it it is very exciting, and and like you said, the the cash flow from combat ultimately is that that sort of catalyst that can um, can help spring that exploration spend and and ultimately grow both the combat deposit and the other one to something that would be attractive to a major um, and and we believe that there is that potential there so <clears throat> with that guys um, thanks for hopping on um, and walking myself as well as the viewers through everything that's happening at Trigon right now um, and everything that's going to go on throughout the next the next year and beyond um, it sounds like an exciting time ahead uh, for our followers if you haven't seen any of our research on trigon you can find it at atrimresearch.ca um, and with that jen and rennie thanks for having you thanks man thank you very much man